Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters Encounters video. I thought I would mix this one in here while I'm continuing to see your current Haunted Dolls and Curses suggestions videos. Please keep them coming, I'm going to do some of those videos very soon. This one is an interesting mix of sorts. Could be something Cryptid and Monster related, could even be Crawler related, and it could also be paranormal related as well. It's hard to say because there's no 100% definitive angle to fit this story in. So for lack of a better term, I thought I would just mix it in here on the cryptids and monsters side. And I'd love to see what your thoughts are on which type of specific category it is. But it's an interesting tale. You'll definitely know what I mean here. Just one moment. It comes from a user called Hush a Baby Secrets, and it's from the Reddit.com website. They placed it under the uh, subreddit called Paranormal, and they titled it as The Witch Children in the Woods. Interesting title. Immediately caught my attention whenever I was seeing some of these stories. So let's go ahead and let's share this encounter here, and then I'll give my thoughts and opinions on it afterward. So here's what that user stated. This is a personal story that happened to me a few years ago when I was 26. I've been too scared to talk about it until now out of fear of being made fun of. So here is my story. Call me Sarah. Four years ago, my great-grandmother passed away at the age of 98. We were close all the way into my adult years, so that death hit me hard. She lived in a one-story house in a rural town 30 minutes outside of Springfield, Missouri. Her house sat on a large and heavily forested piece of land. There was a large hill several hundred feet behind the house that dropped off into a creek. I spent almost my entire childhood staying on this piece of land and had learned how to take care of it and the house. After the funeral services, I volunteered to stay and take care of the land while my family decided on what to do with it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to buy the land, so I wanted to spend as much time out there as I could. My first three days, I spent packing up items and cleaning the house. The nearest neighbor was five miles away, so I didn't have to worry about any unwanted guests that would get in the way of my packing and disturb my personal way of mourning the loss of someone so close to me. The fourth day is when the odd events started occurring. I slept in a sleeping bag in the living room, and when I woke up, I immediately screamed. A few inches away from my face was a dead copperhead snake. It was normal for snakes and other small animals to get in the house, so seeing the snake wasn't surprising. It was the fact that it was so close to my face, and it could have bitten me at any moment while I was sleeping. I briefly wondered why the snake had just come into the house and die, but because there was no physical signs that anything was wrong with it, so I threw it outside and continued with my day, and that weird event was almost forgotten. Later that evening, I decided to go for a walk through the woods to enjoy the nice weather and reminisce about the good times I'd had in the woods and all of the games I used to play. I was walking along an old path that led to a well. The path was a narrow one and was close to the drop-off that led to the creek. I heard a branch snap behind me and instinctively turned my head. I didn't see anything so I assumed it was an animal and continued walking. Just a few minutes later, I heard a snap to my left and turned to look again, but still, I didn't see anything. I started to worry that I was being stalked by something, but it was rare to see large animals in this area, so I just continued walking. I heard a third snap directly in front of me, but now, instead of being worried, I was upset. I was convinced that someone else was out here trying to scare me, so I shouted at what I assumed to be a person, yelling, go away, and everything went uncomfortably silent. But I started to hear footsteps approaching in front of me, but I couldn't see anything. They got faster and faster until whoever or whatever it was was running right at me. I covered my face with my arms and waited to be attacked by some invisible person, but the footsteps stopped. I slowly lowered my arms, but instead of seeing a person, a bobcat, or even a bear, 
I saw a gigantic spider in the middle of a web I hadn't noticed before. If I would have taken just one more step, I would have ended up being bitten. So I turned and ran as fast as I could through the overgrove and back into the house. I was spooked, but I was out in the middle of the woods, and sometimes things like this happened. I knew this land and the house well, so I pushed through the night, and the next two days, nothing out of the ordinary happened. I started yard work my second week, staying out the house, and it wasn't bad. I actually found some old trinkets from my childhood that I buried under a tree. And then while I was picking up fallen branches from a storm the previous night, I noticed a clump of hair was caught in one of them. I remember its color being brown and black, and considered the possibility of it being a rare encounter with a bear, but there were no tracks that I could see. So I brushed it off again, but I was starting to think that maybe someone else was staying on the property, and that upset me. I decided to stay up late to see if I could catch this person in the act. Nothing happened until around 2 a.m. I remember everything so vividly because of how terrified I was. It started with branches crunching and the sound of the wheelbarrow I'd been using earlier falling over. I readied my flashlight and a small knife just in case whoever it was got violent. I heard them step onto the front porch and pull at the screen door but they quickly abandoned it and started walking around the house. I could hear them scraping something sharp against the house, and I was furious. I stood up and shined my flashlight at the nearest window that I assumed the person was standing nearby and shouted at them, I have a weapon. Get off of this property now. Everything stopped, and I was positive that whoever it was had left until I heard something slam against the window so hard I was surprised it didn't break. My flashlight shined on the quote-unquote person, and and at first I wasn't sure what I was looking at. It had long, dark hair with eyes that were way too big for its face. Its skin was wrinkled, and it reminded me of a naked mole rat. It pressed its face against the glass, and fogged it up with its breath, and I heard it run around the house several times and bang on every wall, window, and door every time it passed them. This went on for hours, and I was too scared to move or do anything. I was completely alone being tormented by some strange monster. Every now and then I would get the courage to shine my flashlight and caught a glimpse of this thing. Each time I saw it, it looked more animal-like. All I could do was cry and wait for it to go away. Finally, just after sunrise, the running and the banging stopped, but I didn't dare move until well after 9 a.m. It took all of my courage to open the front door and see what damage had been done to the house and yard after that terrifying experience from the night before, but there was nothing. No footprints, no scratches against the house or broken or cracked windows. It was almost like I imagined the whole thing, but I knew what I saw and had experienced, and it was real. Nothing else happened for the rest of my stay there, and by the end of the month, my grandfather came to pick me up and take care of the belongings that I'd packed away. I was still terrified by what had happened, but I had almost convinced myself that I'd imagined it until my grandfather spoke to me. He told me that he was happy that this land was being sold and how much he hated growing up here. When I asked him why, his answer seemed to validate my experience. Now, my grandfather is a serious, no-nonsense man. He was the type of person that stayed quiet, but when he did speak, you better listen because it was important. He was a hardened war veteran and devoted Christian, so things like paranormal and supernatural were just fairy tales for him. He made sure to tell his children and me and the rest of my siblings that. He told me how his mother, i.e. my great-grandmother, would always try to scare him and his sisters with stories about the land being guarded by monsters. The story says that these monsters... Hybrids is what he called them, were the children of falsely accused witches. The people living in the area back when this was going on claimed that the children were part witch and part animal, 
and needed to be killed, so they were left in the forest to die. He said that when the witch children died, they came back as spirits and claimed the woods as their own, and any unwelcome visitors would be tortured until they were literally scared to death. Just how they are falsely accused mothers have been scared when they had been killed too. Now my grandfather said he didn't believe in much outside of his religion, but he believed that the hybrids were real and that he had been tormented by one of them when he tried to go hunting in the woods for the first time and shot his first deer. He believed he had upset the hybrids by killing an innocent animal and never stepped foot on the land with a weapon and they finally left him alone. Maybe this is a foolish thing to believe, but I believe that the story my grandfather told me is true simply because we both had similar terrifying experiences. If I had had a camera, I would have tried to take a picture of the creature, or if I could draw, I would post a picture of the drawing. I remember every detail about what I saw and will be burned into my memory forever. All of my childhood memories seem tainted now because of this experience, and now I don't think I'm going to miss the land as much as I first thought. It didn't take long for the land and the house to be sold. Those hybrids or whatever is out there can be somebody else's nightmare. One night was more than enough for me. And then that's it. That's everything that this user, Hush by Baby Secret, mentioned in their long story. So here's the, let's talk about it here, essentially, and then give you know my own thoughts and opinions on it. First off, fascinating tale, right? Looks like this happened just... 30 miles outside of Springfield, Missouri. Those of you that are in that area, uh, especially in those wooded areas, as this user stated, it was a heavily forested piece of land that that house sat on. Let me know. Let me know if there really is this type of activity out there. But what is it, right? What is it exactly? Obviously, it's something that at one point I was almost invisible. Maybe it was moving too quickly for her to see, but otherwise it was running straight towards her and she saw nothing. Instead, she heard those footsteps and then she heard what sounded like these feet running at her. And then at the last moment, obviously, she nothing happened and she tried to block it, but there was nothing there to, for her to be able to see. I've been a close experience when it comes to footsteps, hearing them um, and not seeing anything. There's two places that that, that has happened that both of them actually involving uh, cemeteries. Um, one is over at the Arlington area involving the Cemetery of Lost Children. And then the other one was over in Huntsville. Uh, forget what the place was called there, but it's a cemetery that I visited too. It is an eerie experience. Um, it's a cemetery that involves that black Jesus statue, if you want to know specifically. But yes, it's an eerie experience because when I was walking, I could hear footsteps mimicking my footsteps uh, like maybe half a second after each footstep that I did. it was I thought it was a coincidence at first, but once it was a tracking pattern and people heard it on the live streams too, it's real. So the fact that you have something like this running at you, that's a whole other level when it comes to this thing. Luckily, though, I never had the experience involving if this was a crawler, if this thing was essentially is what she saw out there. She described it as pale. She described it as wrinkled, and it looked like a monster, for lack of a better term. So there it was, running and running around that house, that fateful night, slamming every window, um, whatever it had, like its paw or its actual hand, slamming it against the windows and against the doors and against the walls for hours on end. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine just being in that situation Obviously, the idea is to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. But how? If you know this thing is out there and it's moving very, very quickly. I'm surprised she didn't reach out to try to call the cops. I mean, uh, what would the cops say in a situation like that, right? But still, having somebody else, another witness, be able to come out, that would have been something else. Like another type of, of, of person to corroborate that info. I'm surprised too, once again, that there was no photography, no videos, especially if this was happening for hours. Everyone has their phone in their hand always. So it was a little skeptical reading that, but who knows? Maybe again, this is just the in the moment. There's no thought for it considering this crawler or whatever it was 
being out there and then doing all of this stuff. She described it, though, as being uh, associated with the witch children. That's a first. I haven't heard of that one. So if someone let me uh, knows more experience or information on that, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are there, too. But ultimately, that was it. Um, whatever is occurring there on that land apparently tormented her grandfather and then also um, was obviously tormenting her. It's gone, at least from them, and whoever's going to live there is going to have the quote-unquote fortune of dealing with anything that's there too. Oh, that's just going to be something else when it comes to whoever's living there, uh, having to basically now have that situation happen to them maybe on even a nightly basis. Crazy stuff. Terrifying experience nonetheless. But if anybody has more info, anything else I might have missed, then please Post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.